which has been embroiled in a bribery and corruption scandal. The scandal has claimed the GFA president, Koshin Yantechi, who held a, a prize seat among the 36 member FIFA Council, which manages world football when Congress is not in session. Now, Koshin Yantechi, until his FIFA ban and resignation, was expected to vote on behalf of Ghana when 211 member countries meet in Russia on June 13 to decide the 2026 host. Now, and the hosting right are uh, between North American bid and Morocco, with the North American bid represented by Canada seen as favorites. Morocco would bank a lot of hopes on eight African connections where it 54 vote can be crucial. President of Morocco's Royal Football Federation was in Ghana last April to shore up support for the North African bid, which will make it the second African country to host the tournament since South Africa in 2010. Now let's take a look into other issues to focus on issues concerning the announced expose where some members of the legislature have expressed divergent views about plans of the House to set up a special committee to investigate the rot at the Ghana Football Association GFA unraveled by the most recent announced expose. While some are of a view that Parliament is mandated by law to look into such matters of national interest, others have contrary views. Let's take a look. To their basis for saying parliament can't do it. That they, they, they are the doomsayers. You leave the leave it to the doomsayers. We know that we as uh, uh, people's representatives. I don't know why people don't. Uh, why I'm sort of people to support what the people's representatives want to do? Then they come out and say parliament can't do it. That's the people's representative, and we want the good of this country. So if they, uh, in the wisdom of uh, the speaker, he thinks that it is very important to come out with such a committee. Why should we not support it and begin to uh, doubt whether or not uh, what, whether or not at the end of the day is going to pro produce any dividends for this country? No, let's just wait and see. I'm very sure that at the end of the day we we'll would have been contributing a lot to ensuring that we really nip these ills in society uh, in the bad once and for all. Parliament shouldn't get itself involved in this because unfortunately I'm a parliamentarian. Unfortunately, whenever we talk about corruption, we point to politicians. And unfortunately, when we talk about politicians, the politicians we know are the MPs. So we have our own credibility issues that we need to build on. And how are we going to uh, investigate the story? That is one. Number two, for Parliament to investigate this and get to the bottom of it, they will have to subpoena some of the ministers that were um, mentioned, and also including the vice president and the president, so that we get a full picture. Now, the chairman of this committee, being the part of the majority, would not sit down for this committee to subpoena the president, the vice president, the roads minister, Anthony Cabo, and everything else. So, we will not get to the bottom of it. We need to ascertain if they had a relationship with Yantichi and or just Yantichi was just bragging. And it makes it difficult. So I don't think Parliament will be able to get to the bottom of this. And listening to radio this morning, I think we had the Brazil saga. Was Parliament around then? Why didn't we investigate that? And so I'll still give you more details as to what exactly will be happening when it comes to the latest announced expose. GNTV will be giving you more here. And so now looking to other issues in politics here in Ghana, where former president John Dramani Mahama has said that a recent event unfolding under the new patriotic party, MPP government, exposes their lies and vindicates the opposition National Democratic Congress NDC. He said he feels hurt listening to what he described as falsehoods peddled by the MPP against him and the former government. He said the current government performance was worse than it accused him and his NDC of foul in, pa in power before the 2016 elections. According to Mahama, the Ekufuado led government had led Ghanaians into untold hardship, running a nepotistic government. The former president was speaking at a flower in the voter region during party's final nationwide unity walk. He said the unity walk has proven to be the sure way of recognizing the party and forging unity ahead of the 2020 general elections. 
Now, former president John Domani Mahama is seeking to lead the party into the next elections after he lost the previous election to the MPP's Nana Adodankwa Ekufo Ado. Mahama is facing competition from other members of the NDC, including Dr. Ekospio Gabra, Sylvester Mensa, Professor Joshua Alabi, and Alban Bagbin for the presidential ticket of the NDC. And so now and away from that on to other issues where the 2018 BEC has ended. A student um, has also uh, been able to go through the strategies and go through or writing papers to make sure that they qualify into the senior secondary schools. GNTV spoke with a student who completed their BEC just last week. Let's take a look. The 2018 Basic Education Certificate Examination began on Monday, June 4, with over 500 candidates participating nationwide. From the Presec Staff Basic School, where GNTV has been monitoring the exam from the start, the BEC ended successfully hosting two schools with two supervisors, two assistant supervisors, 16 invigilators, two nurses, two police officers, seeing to 527 candidates. This year's candidates will be the second batch of students to enjoy the free senior high school policy. At the school, the news team saw a static candidate storm out of the exam centers onto the compound in jubilation after writing the final paper. Some of the candidates expressed optimism that they would be among the second badge of SHS students to enjoy the free SHS policy while some sang praises and danced to the glory of God for the successful end of the examination. Finally, you are done with school, but you are not done with school. How is the feeling like? Mm, I'm happy though. The papers so far, the papers were easy, they were cool. I'm, I'm very happy because I'm done with my basic school education and it's like I'm moving to another um, stage so I'm very happy. How is the feeling like? Oh so far the papers wrote is fine and I'm expecting six ones. Eh, ah no you wrote nine you wrote nine subjects so yeah. why are you expecting six? No I mean the core subjects okay. I'm expecting one one. Okay and then the, 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 the best two also okay. one one. Okay and so in all you are going to get what? Nine ones. Nine ones at which school? Presec boys. Okay. Now I have Biggie here. Biggie how are you? I'm fine. Is your name Biggie? No. Why why do they call you Biggie? Because I'm big. <laughs> Biggie, you are done with school. How is the feeling like? Well, like I feel like it's all right, but we are praying for the person who will mark our paper in it, and so that we will see what God will do at the end. So you can see the students, they are so happy, um, thanking God for what he has done for them, showing him um, their mercies and all of that. And so they are being led by a teacher. As you can hear, they are singing, we thank you, Lord, we thank you, Lord for the greater things you have done for us. Our only God. We have no other God but Him alone. We started with Him and we want to finish with Him. Even as these um, exams started from Monday, we have invited Him to come and have His own way in these um, exams. Even the weather, He should give us a fair weather, which He did. Last three days it was raining, but they finished before it rained. So that is why we think that after the exams, we have to also give him thanks. Yes, because he's the Alpha and the Omega, the beginning and the end, the first and the last, the starter and the finisher God. So that is what A representative from the Municipal Education Directorate of Lankwantanang Municipal District, Madam Victoria Say Sechere, advised the BEC candidate to take good care of themselves and pray ahead of the results. I told them that when they go home, it's just a small break. They will continue with their education. Therefore, they shouldn't put their books aside. They should concentrate on their books. And they should also do away with those uh, bad boys and girls in the society. Therefore, they shouldn't be deviant in the society. So as they are going home, they should be respectful to their parents. Some students attempted to answer whether to or not change their choice of school after the GES gave candidates up to three weeks to make their selection in the wake of recent technical glitches that affected the program. I think I'll maintain the schools because I think I chose very good schools, so I wouldn't want to change them. I want to keep them and I believe I'll be able to get those schools. Okay. My first choice school. I will surely maintain those schools okay. because and, and, that's my target okay. and I'll get it soon. 
a wrap up for the 2018 basic education certificate examination. We have been here at the Presec staff basic school and so the interactions has been so interesting and warming. All these students are happy to complete um, a BEC and to complete their JHS education waiting to go in for their SHS education and so we ran you through some statistics before the examination started. We had more than 500,000 candidates sitting for this year's basic education certificate examination from over 60,000, um, I beg your pardon, 16,000 schools. The number represents a marginal increase from last year's number of candidates sitting for the exams. And so candidates sitting for this year, should they excel, will be the second badge of students to enjoy the government's flagship free SHS policy. My name is Akosiamwa. I reported from the Presec Staff Basic School here at Legon and reporting for GNTV. And so the children have now completed the BECE examination and we'll be looking forward to be admitted into the secondary cycle where they are going to be the second badge to enjoy the free senior high school policy by the MPP government. Now and on to other issues where 57,000 teenage pregnancies were recorded nationwide in the first half of 2017 and with a total of 31 teenage pregnancy related deaths during the period. According to Marie Stoops International and International NGO, providing contraception and safe abortion services in Ghana, teenage pregnancy continues to be a challenge for most countries, especially those in Africa. The situation, however, demands urgent approach to stem the act for the future of young girls to be secured. Teenage pregnancy, also known as adolescent pregnancy, is pregnancy in females under the age of 20. The causes include poverty, irresponsible parenting, peer pressure, illiteracy, bad company, lack of attention and affection, irresponsibility of children, too much freedom when parents fail to put in place control measures, among others. When girls and women give birth early, they reduce their chances of getting academically empowered and most of their career opportunities are stripped of them. However, when most teenage girls in Ghana get pregnant, they are forced to find means to survive since the effects of poverty are too much on them. As such, they find themselves giving in to advances of men who promise to meet their needs. Gamashi is a suburb of Accra in the greater Accra region. It is densely populated fishing community. Like most coastal towns in Ghana, the factors that make teenage pregnancies thrive are present in communities at Gamachi, such as Jamestown and Choco. At Bukom, an area in Jamestown, Samolate admits some teenage girls don't heed to parental advice, hence they are easily lured by men. We're pregnant, we don't uh, uh, continue the school. Sometimes it's all about we. Sometimes we have money in our pockets, so the lady will concentrate about our money. So they will come to us and we will talk to them, we will to do logoze, logoze, to convince them. So if they agree with us, eh, we just go on to them. That is the reason why sometimes you see that we were pregnant and the ladies, not the young young ladies too. We just pregnant the 40 people. Me, Holy Ghost, I'm talking to you right now. I have two children in Lego. I have been pregnant a woman. Antina, we uh, uh, she is 45 years. I've given him two child. The child every every time he send me money because he know that the child is for me, and the uh, husband know that he too, the child is for him. So that is the reason why when you are asking us why do we pregnant and the lady say this is the issue. We have money. In our so the parents so, don't have money. Oh, the parents have money, but the whole thing is uh, now the situation has been money matter. So when we go to Adori, the thing sometimes when you go to Adori or Fumirata, when we are spraying money, a lady will be there and feel about how we are spraying money. This guy Charlie have money. So when I talk to her and he understand me, she will be my girlfriend. And we do logozi, logozi, and you will see that we have been pre she's pregnant. <laughs> That's the reason why you have been seeing that in 25 years or 90 years she's pregnant. Apart from poverty, parents fail to keep their children in line and as such contributes to the high levels of teenage pregnancy. 
when parents fail to put control measures to what their children can do and watch, the children tend to stray even without their knowledge. In some instances, parents are too busy searching for money that they forget their first responsibility, which is to raise their children. Unfortunately, the trend runs through all the coastal communities across the country. GNTV put the spotlight on Madame Joyce Kwakufomi, a kinky seller and a single parent with three children at Bukum, who narrates how she is bringing up her children after her husband divorced her for the past 13 years. But Obi Woho on him send a year, Juma, and she send no best sorry and no panu. A palano chin or did you on did you on the unfano? And she a had the Uman Aquaraki to a muse, Nadam for Bisha, dear be a anyf, and to a new so bed you be a chi a co. Oveca say away, I may call be moon chambers or no so qua, or who send a dear in tea, or no so best say. Oshene into Bana Oba won't no chen near Jumo Bea, and no su a bay a day. No new su betty me as we are be No one, me and me war, me will be papa, me and I'll be enemy baha. We will like to be a coshi. But no me baha, no me mammy to a dear, me fanning tongue, or be mammy su tongue benku, and I miss me coordinate, and a benku no idea, Miss Wire made Juma, and no mini shammy ma. And I mean, I mean, I mean, fifty time, I mean, 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 I Nebi wo ho a wo nkwala anu ma yu anu mu nim akwala anu se no onyi a sika o ma ni no na o di bi das o di bi kan wo ma ti se bibi owo o anya 3 years esu sika o be ma wo anya 4 years esu sika o be ma u ya ni sa o ti mi hu obi o mbi sa ni se ma mi bibi e che mi one city but u ya wa jun se Akwala na nya ti se 8 years, wanya 18 years and now 15 years a u da su manu to eh to see the na obe wiya and obe bo adwaman what you say but u ya hu se akwala we a mi wo no owo se ya me manu 3 city owo se ya me manu 5 city owo mi mi ba mi kasa mi facebook no e jo wa di o ko na ni ma mi di scan bi kan mi ba pen no I was 16 years. Me didn't that. Me didn't so. Me didn't hear Bibi a only boyfriend. Of course, we money one hundred fifty thousand. Or chubbies one hundred fifty thousand. Or the dia or the bisiye. Into a pe Bibi a or the sad and sick and or the asiye no or the bibeba. Say ma me pe way and soon me the bibeba can one man. Into who a who dia obe man no no on in on pe who so ni mabe ba unsa me so mi mu aden. Into unkwala no. If you are mommy, be man sheba or ban sheba. Even though there have been series of government interventions to curb the menace of teenage pregnancy, more interventions are needed. Um, heartbreaking situations are there making people do what they want to do as to how um, they might want something to eat, and so we we'll, um, we'll rely on men uh, there to give them something um, which will uh, make them end up. Uh, becoming pregnant, getting some unwanted pregnancies at a very tender age. And so we'll be giving more details on what exactly is happening when it comes to teenage pregnancies here in the country. Now, Vice President Dr. Mahamudu Baomia says that the government will not tolerate stuff 
wars between Metropolitan Chief Executives, MMDCEs, and Members of Parliament in the country. According to him, government flagship social intervention programs will require the cooperation and coordination of MMDCEs and MPs. Speaking at a meeting with some DCEs and MCEs in Accra, Dr. Baumia urged them to unite to ensure fast-track development in their respective areas. Vice President Mohamed Baumia noted that the occasional ramblings and tensions between certain MPs and certain MMDCs do not advance the course of development of their respective constituencies. Many share the view that the perennial conflicts between MMDCs and MPs have been the bane of our decentralizing efforts as a nation. Many of this government's flagship program will be realized by the central role of MPs and MMDCs. There have been some instances where MMDCs and MPs fight each other over control and power. This situation usually occurs when they are from different political parties. Dr. Baumia said such conflicts between MMDCs and MPs impede national development. Dr. Baumia added that the one district, one factory, one village, one dam, the development authorities are all on board and at various levels of implementation. He added that they have recently inaugurated new MMDs, increasing the stock from 2016 to 254. This is to ensure that governance is brought to the doorstep of the people. A look on the international front this morning where Al Shabaab strikes again following Friday attack that killed US commando. A suicide car bomb explosion at a military base in Somalia injured seven soldiers late Saturday. A military official said an Islamic group Al Shabaab claimed responsibility for the attack. Al Shabaab fights to topple Somalia's western backed central government and impose it a rule based on its own strict interpretation of Islam Syria law. Major Hussein Ali, a Somali military officer, told Reuters that the attack took place at a military base just outside the town of Kismayu in southern Somalia. The foreign forces ran away from the base this morning because they attacked them on Friday. The assault was on the same base where a U.S. soldier was killed in the attack late on Friday. Al Shabaab claimed responsibility for the Saturday attack and said they killed 40 Somali soldiers. Exiled opposition Mosi Katumbi used a video link on Saturday to address thousands of opponents of President Joshua Kabila ahead of the Zimba election that many hope will end his 17 years in power. Katumbi, a millionaire businessman and former government governor of Democratic Republic of Congo's COP, made this to make sure that he announces his presence and his intentions to contest for the race. The UN has condemned intimidations of staff and patients by armed groups in the Central African Republic, CRA. Men armed with machetes, knives and other crude weapons entered hospitals in the past few months, the UN said. Most recently in the town of Bambari, terrified relatives had moved patients from Bambari Hospital even though they still needed treatment. The UN said it was unclear who was carrying out the attacks suspected of being ethnically motivated. The conflict has led to a 70% increase in the number of internally um, displaced people since January 2017. The U.S. says the U.S. Humanitarian Coordinator in the car, Najat Reji, said in a statement he would hold these armed groups directly responsible for any medical complications and life-threatening conditions of patients. Humanitarian workers have also been targeted in Bambari, with nine of nine of their compounds attacked and located last month alone. The country has been in state of chaos since mainly Muslim rebels drove President Francio Bosisi from power more than five years ago.
on looking at some international relations between the U.S. and North Korea, where U.S. President Donald Trump and North Korean leader Kim Jong-un have arrived in Singapore for their historic summit. Mr. Trump flew in aboard Air Force One a few hours after Mr. Kim touched down with his entourage. The two men are staying in separate hotels, not far from each other, and are preparing for Tuesday's meeting on the resort island of Sentosa. Mr. Kim told Singapore's PM that the entire world is watching. Mr. Trump has called it a one-time shot at peace. The U.S. hopes the summit will kickstart a process that eventually sees Mr. Kim give up nuclear weapons. The two leaders have had an extraordinary up and down relationship over the past 18 months, trading insults and threatening war before abruptly changing track and moving towards a face-to-face -face meeting. And so I'll be giving you more update as to what exactly happens ahead of that meeting on Tuesday. That's all for the news this morning here on GNTV. We've been live from our studios inside number 10 and you Street here in a slam down Accra, Ghana. I am Bryce Nana Kwesi Yemeni. Stay tuned for more detail and more created programs here on GNTV. Have a good morning.